Okay. Um, our reading today is in Proverbs chapter 16, 1 through 20. Proverbs 16, 1 through 20. Let's bow in prayer before we start. The gracious Holy Father, thank you for your goodness and mercy and your holy word that feeds us, uh, that we may grow in grace and knowledge. You give the increase. We thank you, Father, for saving our souls. We thank you for uh, our Lord Jesus Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection. Father, we pray that you, uh, those listening, may receive a blessing as we look into your holy word this day and that we uh, can grow in, in grace and knowledge, Father, as we take in the word. Father, have mercy, and we thank you for this time as we could spread the word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Proverbs 16, the preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. A divine sentence is in the lips of the king. His mouth transgresseth not in judgment. A just weight and balance are the Lord's. All the weights of the bag are his work. It is an abomination to kings to commit wickedness, for the throne is established by righteousness. Righteous lips are the delight of kings, and they love him that speaketh right. The wrath of a king is as messengers of death but a wise man will pacify it. And the light of the king's countenance is life, and his favor is as a cloud of the latter rain. <clears throat> How much better is it to get wisdom than gold, to get understanding rather to be chosen than silver? The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better it is to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. He that handleth a matter wisely shall find good. And whoso trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. Okay, we'll stop right there. <clears throat> We're going to continue our study in Revelation chapter 5. So we come to uh, verse 14. Revelation chapter 5, uh, verse 14. Um, so let's, let's pick it up. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 14. <clears throat> okay, we've seen that last week um, in verse 13, uh, those creatures are uh, believers, and we praise the Lord, saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And then we get into verse 14, and it says, the four beasts, um, which we already worked with that in uh, chapter four, those four beasts are a picture of God. 
God himself. And uh, it focuses on the Lord Jesus Christ as it brings all uh, that kind of language about the first piece. Um, it was like a lion, the second beast, a calf, the third beast, a face of a man, and the fourth beast, like a flying eagle in chapter four, verse seven, which all points to the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, is the lamb of God. And, uh, and so uh, he, God came and took upon the form of man. And so um, these four beasts would be a picture of God. And if, uh, remember, remember, we went to Ezekiel chapter one, there it says the living creatures, uh, but it's still the same teaching. Um, and it says Ezekiel saw visions of God. And so that's why these four beasts are a picture uh, as the Bible teaches that, say. And so the four beasts said, amen. So God said, amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. And we see that the uh, four and twenty elders are the pitch, a picture of believers, uh, the fullness of believers. Uh, if you go to um, Revelation chapter 4, it says, And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats, I, I saw four and 20 elders sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And we see that um, uh, these, uh, these um, elders are the fullness of believers as they're clothed in white raiment, say. And so um, uh, this is Christ righteousness and so we have a picture here see of of uh uh, uh, cry, uh believers the fullness of believers by saying 24 uh remember 12 24 and 144 uh or 144,000 would be a picture of fullness of believers and 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 so they're clothed in white raiment we know that's uh, Christ's righteousness or salvation. Uh, remember chapter three, it, it says there that, uh, look at, look at, uh, um, verse, um, five, he that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. See, and, uh, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life but I'll confess his name before my father and before his angels. And so uh, you see how um, it, it's a picture of uh, salvation here when we overcometh, which means being born of God, okay? So uh, going back to chapter five, verse 14, and the four beasts said, amen, God, it would be the four beasts, the picture of God, and the four and twenty elders, which would be a fullness of believers that are clothed with white, white raiment, fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. Say, And we worship our Lord Jesus Christ. We worship our Heavenly Father, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. See, God, the one God that um, created the heaven and earth. And of course, um, Many uh, times in the Bible, the Lord Jesus um, was worshipped. And, and uh, if you go to Luke 4, the Bible says we're only to worship the Lord and uh, the Lord God and serve him only. Look at chapter 4 and look at verse 8. <clears throat> and Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. See? And so um, we worship uh, God. We worship our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why it says here, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So we see uh, that... Uh, in Matthew, go to Matthew chapter 2. I'm just going to show you a few verses uh, in Matthew. <clears throat> where 
they worship the Lord Jesus. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end, the first and the last, the Almighty. Look at Matthew 2.11. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. That's Christ. We, they worshipped Christ. And when they had opened the treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. See? And then uh, go to uh, Matthew 8. Matthew 8, and look at verse 2. Matthew 8, and look at verse 2. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. See? And, uh, and so we, uh, the believers... As it says, we worship our Lord Jesus Christ. And um, look at chapter 9, look at verse 18. Matthew 9, 18. <clears throat> and while he spake these things, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is, is even now dead, but come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. Okay, and so uh, we worship the Lord Jesus, just like it says here that people worship Christ. Remember, Thomas called Jesus my Lord and my God. And so um, uh, Jesus would say often, my, um, the, the Father and I are one, say. And um, um, now let's go back to Revelation 5. Uh, and so... I just want to uh, touch on this last word here. It says, for him that liveth forever and ever. And that Greek word means eternal. Uh, that word ever, it means eternal. And it's, it's used over in Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. Look at verse um, 8 in Hebrews 1. And verse 8. <clears throat> but unto the Son, that's the Lord Jesus, he said, Thy throne, O God, is, is forever and ever. That's, that's the word eternal. A scepter of righteousness is the separate scepter of thy kingdom. So there he's speaking of the Son, and it says, of the, the son, thy throne, O God. See, it's, he's called God there, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. See? And so all through the Bible, we have um, this teaching. And so um, <clears throat> I want us to go back, and we're going to start now uh, chapter 6 of Revelation, and we're going to look into uh, verse 1, and uh, I want to say this before we start this chapter, that these seals, remember there's seven seals, and uh, and it says it right there in, in chapter 5, verse 1, and I saw on the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within, and on the backside sealed with seven seals, see, and so here we're going to start seeing that these seals uh, are going to be opened, say, and um, and so um, we're going to see how it develop, uh, how these develop into uh, giving us insight into the great tribulation period, say, and um, we see some of this in, in Revelation two when it talks about the seven churches and the condition of those churches during that time. Remember how they went after false doctrines and uh, they left their first love. This is this is the uh, uh, the condition of the churches during the end of time. They go after the doctrines of demons, say. And so, um, uh, so let's start with verse one. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder. And one of the four beasts saying, come and see. Okay. So, um, of course, the lamb is the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, 
the the these seals again would be the complete seven would be the complete perfection of the great tribulation period see as it as these seals are open it's bringing out uh, insight into the great tribulation so um remember god's the one that gives us understanding of these things just go over to daniel for a moment look at uh daniel <clears throat> look at daniel chapter eight look at verse 16 there and i heard a man's voice between the banks of uli which called and said uh, said gabriel make this man to understand the vision so he came near where i stood and when he came i was afraid and fell upon my face but he said unto me understand O son of man for at the time of the end shall be the vision uh and so i'm going to read to 19. now as he was speaking with me i was in deep sleep on my face toward the ground but he touched me and set me upright and he said behold i will make thee know what shall be in the last end of indignation for at the time appointed the end shall be so by the books being open uh god given his people understanding of what to look for during the time of the end during the time of great tribulation that believers god's given wisdom and understanding uh of the condition uh, or the nature of the great tribulation and that's why it says for at the time of the end shall be the vision say and um and also flip over to daniel 12. verse 9 he said go thy way daniel for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end say and so um as the seals are open uh we can understand that god's given us uh understanding of what to uh to look for during the end near the end of time in the church the condition of the churches say now uh look at verse 10 many shall be purified and made white and tried but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand but the wise shall understand say so we see that um this holds true even in the days of noah uh it says uh noah knew in his house those that were in the ark uh, but those outside the ark they it says they knew not till the flood came and took them all away and they perished say and the same thing during the time of the end uh of great tribulation uh people don't understand that satan is taking his seat in the churches say and they don't see those things they don't understand it uh, yet, as it says here, um, the wicked and the none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. So God will have mercy and give his people wisdom, as he, he says in Daniel there, the wise shall understand. Those that have been born again are in the book of life. Uh, so back in Revelation 6, verse 1, and I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals and i heard as it were the noise of thunder okay uh now uh, again that opening would would be the uh a picture uh, of looking into the the nature of the great tribulation and god given us understanding and so um so here uh what is this thunder i, I as it were the noise of thunder okay and so we see that the thunder is going to be the word of God. It's God's voice. Look at Job. The Bible will, will tell us these things. Look at uh, Job chapter 37. Look at Job 37. And look at verse uh, 2 through 5 there. It's one thing just reading, reading Revelation 
as you're reading, but uh, it's a joy to, to understand uh, the spiritual teaching, see, that comes uh, out of these words. And that's why uh, we always look for the spiritual teaching uh, to get the, the meaning of, of these things. Um, when it's the next verse going to say a white horse, uh, or, or do we think that it's a literal white horse? Uh, or what is that white horse teaching? But right now, um, let's look at this word thunder. Look at uh, Job 37, two through five. Hear attentively, attentively to the noise of the voice, noise of his voice and sat and the sound that goeth out of his mouth he directeth it under the whole heaven uh and his lightning unto the ends of the earth after a voice roareth he uh thundereth with the voice of his excellency and he will not stay them when his voice is heard god thundereth marvelously thundereth marvelously with his voice great things do with he which we cannot comprehend so the the thunder is the voice of god so and so uh uh look at some other verses go to psalm 77 look at verse 18 there 77 look at verse 18 mm -hmm. The voice of thy thunder was in the heaven. The lightnings lightened the world. The earth trembled and shook. So the voice of thy thunder, say, it's the voice of God. And one more is Psalms 104. Look at verse seven over there. Psalms 104, verse seven. <clears throat> At thy rebuke, they fled. At the voice of thy thunder, they hasted away. And so it's very clear that that thunder is uh, the voice of God. So when it says back in Revelation 6, 1, I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. Okay, so here we have the voice of God. Uh, the One of the four beasts is God himself saying, come and send, uh, come and see so you see how it how we know we're right on the right track because it says i heard as it were the noise of thunder and then it says one of the four beasts we know that in chapter four we see that the four beasts was god and then it says saying come and see so that so that thunder is the voice of god and the four beast as a picture of God say so we're right on track uh, it all fits together as we uh compare spiritual with spiritual say and so um this word come and see it means to uh, come or to appear uh, it's the same word over in John uh 6 uh 44. <clears throat> not everybody is going to come and see say uh but those uh during living during that time uh on this earth uh during the great tribulation we'll we'll see uh what what he's and give us understanding but look at john 6 44. it says no man can come to me and that's the same word there come and it means uh, uh come, to come or appear so no man can come to me except the father which hath sent me draw him and i'll raise him up at the last day so uh, that word um it's saying pretty clear right here that nobody could come to the lord jesus uh, only if the father draws him that's the only way someone's going to come to him see and so um the ones that are going to come and see would be the god's elect those in the book of life say and and those at uh at the time of the end that god's given understanding say and this uh this word see in, in the greek it means to look behold perceive and um uh it's again uh believers are the ones that uh understand and see these things look at um 
Matthew 13. <clears throat> Perceive or understand is, is the meaning of that come and see. But look at Matthew 13, look at verse 16 and 17. <clears throat> Uh, 16 and 17. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. So, um, it's a, and then go over to 51, Matthew 13, 51. Jesus said unto them, have you understood all these things? And they say unto him, yea, Lord. And so remember, he's given a lot of figurative spiritual parables here. And, uh, <clears throat> and, and the disciples said to them, how come you, you, you speak to them in parables? Remember in chapter 13, look at verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto them, said unto him, why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he answered and said unto them, because it, it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it's not given, see? So not everybody uh, understands the gospel of Christ. Not everybody understands the great tribulation. Uh, only those that it's been, that he's given understanding to, see? Like it says in Daniel that he's come to give understanding of these things. So the Holy Spirit reveals these things to us. And so the ones that are going to come and see uh, are the believers that will understand the nature of the great tribulation. And so um, you're not going to hear these things preached in the churches and uh, of great tribulation and uh and Satan taking his seat in the churches. And so, um, but if God shows you uh, and gives you, and you understand sound doctrine and, and you hold to the truth uh, as you take in uh, these words and, and, and the messages of great tribulation, God's, God can work through these things to, to give you insight and understanding, uh, you see, of what, what's going on. So let's go back to Revelation 2, and uh, and I want to uh, work with ver uh, uh, Revelation 6, I want to work with verse 2. So it says, I saw and behold a white horse. Okay, now, um, again, you don't uh, take that white horse literally. What, why is God saying a white horse? And, and as we work with this chapter, uh, there's a red horse, a black horse, a pale horse, and, and all these have spiritual meaning, say. But this white horse, of course, uh, and he that sat on him is, is the Lord Jesus Christ. And so and the word white in the Greek, it means light, white. It, it's a, really a picture of the gospel, uh, the uh, Christ righteousness pure holiness whole um holy it's it's the same uh word over in revelation look at chapter three of revelation and uh in verse four and five there um thou has a few names even in sardis which have not defiled their garments they shall walk with me in white for they are worthy okay and and we read this earlier he that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. So what I want to, uh, what I'm bringing out here is this white, white raiment. It's pureness, holiness, Christ's righteousness. Uh, uh, here, when it says uh, he's on a white horse, it's a picture of um, uh, the gospel going forth. Now, why a horse? Okay. Go to um, first Proverbs 21. You know, horses were used uh, to do battle. And of course, the Lord Jesus uh, has his horse and his and his army. 
um, that follow him. And of course, Satan has his horse and his army. But look at um, Proverbs 21 and look at verse 31 there. The horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. Okay. So, in other words, uh, the white horse is that we do battle with the gospel. We do battle uh against satan bringing the gospel of our lord jesus christ say and so uh christ is on the white horse go to jeremiah <clears throat> look at chapter 8 and verse 6. <clears throat> these are verses that have to do <clears throat> with with the horse jeremiah 8 and look at verse uh, 6. <clears throat> I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. No man repented him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turned to his course as the horse rusheth into the battle. Say, as the horse rusheth into the battle. So the horse is prepared for battle. And so when it says, uh, back, uh, well, let's look at one more, then we'll go back there. Uh, look at, um, well, we'll go to Revelation and we'll look at um, chapter 19. Look at verse 11. Revelation 19, verse 11. <clears throat> this will tell you exactly uh, who's on the horse and uh, uh, and give us some other, other information. Uh, 1911, and I saw heaven open. And behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him is called faithful and true. So we know that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And in him righteousness, true, and in righteousness he does judge and make war, say, and, and tying into the white horse. His eyes were as flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. Now, of course, who are these armies in heaven? God's elect that have overcome. Remember, we sit with him on his throne. Uh, of course, these are believers that have become saved. And we go forth with the gospel like the Lord Jesus uh, goes before us, see? And the armies which were in heaven followed him, see? And Christ goes before us uh, because he's our Lord and Savior and uh, and. Uh, we look to Jesus, say, we follow him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, uh, saying again that we're clothed in Christ's righteousness, just like we've learned in, in Revelation 2, he that overcometh about the 24 elders, they're clothed in white raiment, see, and so uh, we spiritually uh, do battle with the gospel by saying white horses okay don't take that literally that doesn't it doesn't make any sense when you take this literally white horses um but you see how spiritually it it uh, it makes plenty of sense and it's very clear that we do battle with the gospel by saying a white horse see and we ride upon white horses we do we go forth with the gospel of christ say with the pureness of the lord jesus christ's righteousness go down to verse um 19. um <clears throat> look at look at uh look at the uh the beast right it says here and the beast and I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army, see? And there's the battle that goes on, Satan and his false prophets and the false church are 
doing battle against the Lord Jesus Christ and against those that are uh, his uh, the army that's in heaven, uh, those that have are following the Lord Jesus, his the gospel of Christ. See? And there it says they do make war against him, Christ, that sat on the horse and against his army, which we know in verse 14, it's it's the the uh, those that are in Christ army. Those are God's elect. OK, so go back to Revelation six. And, and now we see that I saw and behold a white horse uh, again. Uh, the gospel going forth, Christ uh, that sits upon the horse, and um, and he that sat on him, that he is the Lord Jesus, that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering to conquer, say, and so uh, what's this bow a picture of, and uh, and of course it, it's it's the it's the word of God. It's in fact this word bow in the Greek. It's it means a, a bow, but it's um, derived from another Greek word that means to bring forth. And and uh, what do we bring forth? What does Christ bring forth? The gospel, the word of God. Say, and so um, remember uh, bow and doesn't say arrows, but arrows also is the word of god but when we have a bow you have arrows with it look at um uh, isaiah 49 look at verse one and one and two there isaiah 49 look at one and two <clears throat> listen o isles unto me and hearken ye people from far the lord hath called me from the womb from the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. And he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. And well, what's the, what would that be? He made my mouth like a sharp sword. What's, what's, what, is, what would be a sharp sword? The word of God. And in the shadow of his hand hath he hid me and made me a polished shaft and that word uh, shaft in the hebrew it means arrow he made me a polished arrow in his quiver hath he hid me and so god uses us uh, to bring uh, the gospel of the lord jesus christ say his armies so that word shaft is the word arrow and so of course bow and arrows go together the bows the word of god the arrows would be a, the word of god say and so when we look at revelation 6 uh where it says he that sat on him had a bow and, and again see when you read these things it's a joy to understand uh, some of this language uh, as uh, the spiritual words otherwise uh what you get uh you're just going to read it and you're not going to understand any uh, uh what does the white horse mean and what why what does that thunder a picture of say and as we as you work with these words and see the spiritual teaching it, it's it's just a joy to 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 understand these the spiritual language say and so uh, and I'm giving you verses to show you what they mean. Say, so I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him, uh, the Lord Jesus, uh, sat on this white horse, had a bow, uh, which is the word of God. Okay, and now it says a crown, and uh, we know a crown is uh, to reign or to rule. A crown was given unto him. Now, remember, uh, as Christ overcame, uh, he reigns and rules with the gospel. And um, remember in, in chapter four, the, the elders, uh, look at chapter four, verse four. Round about the throne were 24 <clears throat> seats, and upon the seats I saw four and 20 elders sitting clothed in white raiment, <clears throat> and they had on their heads crowns of gold 
see and so <clears throat> there god's telling us there these crowns were of gold which gold is the gospel and they're in other words they're reigning we reign or rule with the gospel by saying crowns of gold because gold is the gospel crown means to reign or rule so gold crowns would be we reign and rule with the gospel and christ as christ is in us see and we we sit with christ on his throne or in heavenly places so the lord jesus uh of course overcame death and uh and so uh he uh has a crown a crown was given unto him and he went forth conquering to conquer say and so uh go to revelation 14 and look at verse 14. and i looked and behold a white cloud and upon the cloud one sat like unto the son of man and that's the lord jesus christ having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle say and again uh there uh, there it says golden crown it's it's the same teaching uh, as revelation 6 2 a crown was given unto him whether it says crown or here uh, we have more information it's a golden crown which again is the gospel he reigns and rules with the gospel of christ with this with the gospel and uh and so um he has the crown of gold we wear crowns of gold and in other words we reign that's why it says we do battle on white horses against satan's army say and so it says he went forth conquering to conquer okay he went forth conquering to conquer now this word um uh conquering it means um subdue overcome prevail or get the victory okay and and so each every time a person becomes saved uh we overcome see god uh saves us and and we we get the victory through our lord jesus christ and that's salvation in fact it's the same word uh, overcometh uh you remember, remember in revelation 2 we went through the seven churches and uh at the end of each church it says he that overcometh um for example um look at uh verse 7 revelation 2 7 he that hath it here ear let him hear what the spirit says unto the churches to him that overcometh will i give to eat of the tree of life and of course that's christ the gospel which is in the midst of the paradise of god see and so after each one of these churches it says he that overcometh say and so uh this this is what this word conquering uh, in this in the greek it means to overcome say and we overcome when we're born again and god is the one that uh brings us into salvation go to first john chapter five and look at verse four there <clears throat> first john uh five look at verse four for what whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world say and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith and uh remember that word conquering means subdue overcome prevail get the victory and so through the through the cross through the blood of our lord jesus we get the victory he's the one that brings us into salvation and that which is born of uh as it says in in john 3 that which is born of flesh is flesh that which is born of spirit is spirit so every one of god's elect are born of the spirit so whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world say and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith and so 
this is how we become saved. The Holy Spirit comes into us. And uh, we had nothing to do with our physical birth, and we have nothing to do with our spiritual birth. God does the creating, see? And so um, God, uh, we go, it says here that, and he went forth conquering to conquer. And so he has power. Uh, the Lord Jesus has power over Satan, say. And so uh, the Lord, <clears throat> the Lord goes forth with the gospel. Um, I want to show you a verse before uh, we finish. Uh, we close today. Go to uh, Mark one <clears throat> and look at verse um, twenty-eight. <clears throat> when it says, when it says there that he went forth. Uh, and this is the word that uh, that word forth in the Greek, it means to issue, to go forth, or to proceed. Um, and you're going to see it's it's translated spread. So the gospel it gets spread when we go forth with the word. Look at Mark 128. And immediately his fame spread. That's the word forth. See, he went forth conquering to conquer. In other words, the spread of the gospel. See, immediately his fame spread. Well, who spread it is the believers that would spread the, the name of Christ, the gospel of Christ. See, his, immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. See, and so the other verse I want to read is, First Thessalonians chapter uh, one. First Thessalonians one. <clears throat> okay, First Thessalonians one. Look at verse five there. Five through eight. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance. And you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that you were in samples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God word is spread abroad. And there's the same word uh, to go forth. As it says, he went forth conquering to conquer. And here we, and we know that's the gospel going forth. And that's why it says here, uh, that in every place your faith to God word is spread abroad so that we need not to speak anything. So they were bringing forth the gospel. We bring forth the gospel when we're saved. And, uh, and so uh, this is the, the, the work or the, that God is in us. Uh, and he, he brings, uh, he speaks through us the word of God and so what I want to do now is just sum up what we went over today, and that should that should do it. Um, so we know um, that those four beasts are a picture of God himself in 514, and that the 420 elders are uh, fullness of believers that worship our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives forever and ever. He, eternal. God is eternal. And then we get to verse 6, chapter 6. And this, the Lamb, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, opened one of the seals. And again, the opening uh, is the beginning or the start of an event, which we know is the great tribulation as we work with this chapter. And also, uh, it's, it's, it opens up our understanding, see? God opens up our understanding to the nature of the great tribulation to his people. And so I heard the noise of thunder, which is the voice of God, say, the, no, the voice of God. And one of the four beasts, which is God himself, 
saying, come and see. And so uh, we know the ones that are going to come and, and understand are those that are in God's kingdom have been born of God. Uh, God reveals these things to his people, like we read in Matthew 13. Uh, as Jesus says, to you it's been granted, uh, given to know the mysteries of the kingdom, but to those uh, others are given in parables that, that they don't understand. See? So uh, uh, verse 2, uh, chapter 6, verse 2, I saw and beheld a white horse, which would uh, be a picture of Christ's righteousness doing battle with the gospel. The horse does battle. And, uh, and the Lord Jesus is, and we that follow Christ are on white horses, and we go forth with the gospel. And of course, against the, the enemy, Satan and his army, say, and uh, we do battle with the word of God, with the gospel of the Lord Jesus. And he that sat on him, that's the Lord Jesus that sat on this white horse, had a bow, which is the word of God, uh, and a crown was given him. In other words, he reigns and rules uh, given unto him. And he reigns with the gospel. He rules with the gospel. And he went forth conquering to conquer, say, and um, to spread the word of God. And those that come into salvation uh, uh, are defeated. See, um, he conquered. We conquer Satan through, as I read in 1 John 5, uh, through being born of God. And we have victory uh, over Satan through the cross, through the blood of our Lord Jesus. And these people uh, that are coming into salvation, uh, of course, are God's elect. And, uh, and so, Lord willing, uh, next week we're going we're gonna to work with verse 3, where it says he opened the second seal, and I heard the the second beast say, come and see, and there went another horse that was red. There went out another horse that was red. Now, what does that mean? What would a red horse be a picture of? And power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. So we're going to see next week what all that's uh, a picture of.